In the previous video, we talked about the uh, statistic inference about the difference between two population means when sigma 1 and sigma 2 are known. As you can imagine here, we're going to deal with a situation in which two population standard deviations are unknown. Let's look at interval estimation of the difference between two population means first. Well, the point estimate is x1 bar minus x2 bar. And the margin of error is given by the critical t value times standard error. Because we do not know about the population standard deviations, we are going to use t distribution instead of normal distribution. The way we calculate standard error is similar to what we did previously. It's just that we are going to replace sigma, the population standard deviation, with s, sample standard deviation. That's why you see the formula over here for calculating the interval estimation. Well, a twist when we don't know about the population standard deviation is as follows. We are going to provide degree of freedoms. And there is a formula for calculating that, which looks pretty ugly. But we are going to make this as a function, and then we are going to leave the calculation of degree of freedom to the computer. Just keep in mind, this number calculated from formula is very likely to be a decimal. On most t-distribution tables, you don't see a decimal as a degree of freedom. As a result, it's recommended that uh, we round 9 integer degree of freedom down to provide a larger t-value and a more conservative interval estimate. And alpha is our old friend significance level, and 1 minus half is nothing but our confidence level. Next, let's take a look at the hypothesis testing. Once again, there are three forms of hypothesis test about the difference between two population means, lower tailed test, upper tailed test, and two tailed test. And once again, D0 is the hypothesized difference between two population means. In most cases, D0 is zero. To calculate the test statistic, uh, the numerator will be the uh, difference between two sample means minus d0, the hypothesized difference. The denominator will simply be the SE given by this formula, square root of s1 squared divided by n1 plus s2 squared divided by n2. And the degree of freedom is given by the formula on the previous slide. Here's some practical advice. In most of the cases, equal or nearly equal sample sizes such that n1 plus n2 is at least 20 are adequate because uh, we are going to use t distribution, which take into account the uh, randomness in S1 and S2 already. If the population distributions are highly skewed, larger sample sizes are recommended. Smaller sample sizes can be used only if the population distributions are approximately normal. In most scenarios, we are going to have sufficiently large sample sizes. Uh, this becomes pretty much a moot point. Next, let's take a look at one example. The U.S. Department of Transportation provides the number of miles that residents of the 75 largest metropolitan areas travel per day in a car. Suppose that for a simple random sample of 50 Buffalo residents, the mean is 22.5 miles a day, and the standard deviation is 8.4 miles a day. And for independent sample of 40 Boston residents, the mean is 18.6 miles a day, and the standard deviation is 7.4 miles a day. What is the point estimate of the difference between the mean number of miles that Buffalo residents travel per day and the mean number of miles that Boston residents travel per day? What is the 95% confidence interval for the difference between the two population means? Once again, we're going to switch to our IPython notebook. 
Well, we are going to import t distribution from the scipy.stats package, and we are going to define a simple function to calculate the standard error. And next, I'm going to define a function to calculate the degree of freedom, the long ugly formula we see on the slide. Here's the function I'm going to go when we need to calculate the degree of freedom. Next, I'm going to collect information from the problem statement. x1 is simply x bar, which is equal to 22.5 miles per day for Buffalo residents. And x2 or x2 bar is equal to 18.6 miles per day for Boston residents. Now we are ready to do some calculation. First of all, I'm going to call the uh, standard error function to compute the standard error based on uh, two sample standard deviations and two sample size. And then I'm going to call the degree of freedom function to calculate the degree of freedom. Once we have that, I'm going to compute the uh, critical t value by calling the inverse t function from SciPy. And keep in mind, uh, we need the degree of freedom over here. And once we have the critical t value, we are going to compute much of error, and then we can find out about the uh, confidence interval. Let's take a look. The SE is about 1.67. Degree of freedom is 87.14. If you are using the t distribution table to find the t value, then it is recommended that you use 87 instead of 88. But because we are calling the uh, t distribution from SciPy package, we can just plug in these uh, decimal numbers. The resulting t value is 1.98756, and the margin of error is 3.31. Now we are ready to find the lower bound and upper bound of the 95% confidence interval. I'm going to generate the lower bound and upper bound of this 95% confidence interval as a list. Let's take a look and give it a try. The 95% confidence interval lower bound is 0.586 miles per day, and the upper bound is 7.2 miles per day. We are 95% confident that the difference between the mouse Buffalo residence travel per day and the mouse Boston residence travel per day is between 0.586 miles and 7.214 miles. In other words, uh, on average, residents in Buffalo travel longer than the residents in Boston. To wrap up this video, we are going to take a quick look at the uh, case of matched sample. Matched samples are also called paired samples. This happens when the samples to be compared are paired in some natural way, such as a pretest and a uh, post test for each person or husband and wife pairs. In those cases, there is a more appropriate form of analysis than the two sample procedure. For example, let's consider a GMAT test preparation course and suppose a student took GMAT test first and then they took this training course and then took GMAT test again. It's very likely that there is a fairly strong correlation between the uh, pre-training and post-training GMAT scores. Students who score low on the first attempt are likely to score relatively low on the second attempt as well. The independent sample procedure does not take this correlation into account, so it ignores some important information. And here we are going to describe a procedure to deal with paired samples or matched samples. With matched samples, we first compute the difference within each sampling unit. Then, this process degenerates into the inference about one population mean. Let's call UD the mean of the difference in values for the two populations. DI is the difference within each sampling unit. We can compute the uh, average D score which is, as a matter of fact, is the uh, 
x bar the sampling mean we did previously and then we can calculate the sample standard deviation for d and then compute the t-statistic use the formula we saw before